All right, welcome back to another video. And this one I'm gonna do on drawing faces from cartoons, cartoony to realistic. Because somebody asked me just last night, could I do a video on teaching how to draw realistic faces? And so I thought about it this morning when I, when I woke up. And that's when I have my best ideas is when I just wake up. So this is why my voice is kind of like, yeah, you know, so uh, because I, ju I just jumped out of bed and I said, you know, I, I figured out a way to present this. And that's the whole thing is how do you present something so people can understand? So let's go and see if you can understand how we're going to present this. So when we're young or when we first start out, it's not necessarily when we're young, it's when we first start out learning how to draw. You want to draw a face. And that's one of the one of the, the, the most um most things that we draw, faces and houses, I guess because we see that so much. So when we first learn to draw a face, we'll do something like this. We'll do this circle, and then we'll do like some eyes, and we'll do the mouth. And then usually that's that's your first face. That's our first face that we, we, we tend to draw. So the only way to learn to get better at something is observation. We have to look at it to see what it looks like. And so when we're drawing, we say, oh, a face has this, or, you know, a house has this, or a dog looks like that, or something looks like this. And you have to have reference. Always have reference, as much reference as you can get when you start out drawing. When I started out, I would clip out things from magazines and books and so forth, and I had a little manila folder. And I just kept things in there because yeah, I might need it one day, bedrooms or airplanes or whatever. So you have to have that reference. So as far as faces, when we start doing faces, we start out like that. And as we go along, we get a little older or we get a little more knowledge. <clears throat> Forgive me. As I said, I just jumped up. We start to add more things to it. We say like, okay, so there's a face. So that face has to have a nose. So what I want to do is I want to do another face here. And then uh, we'll compare from this to this. So we have the eyes. And we have the mouth. There's, there's, a, there's a face. So as I say, we say to ourselves, let me get a drink of water before my voice cracks and then I lose it all. I have my best ideas first thing in the morning. When I wake up when the mind is clear and I'm not thinking about anything, paying bills or going to work or whatever, I, I get my best ideas. So here we go. We have your face again. And then once you start to observe the, your faces a little bit more and your, your, your skills may get approved a little bit more, you say, okay, so this face, it has, it needs a nose. You know, there's a nose. You know, sometimes people draw a V for the nose, but you have to have a nose. Let me get that V out of there because that looks like a check mark. Check. There's a little thing for a nose. And then you say to yourself, okay, so the eyes have to have like eyebrows. And then uh, some ears and then maybe a bottom lip and then your face starts to come to be more of a realistic face and then you look at it and you, you say to yourself okay so the mouth maybe the mouth is not like that wide it's not that wide and then you realize oh the face is not round like uh, you know a happy sun it's more of an egg shape And you would start adjusting that. Then you say, oh, the eyes, are, maybe the eyes are a little bigger. The eyes have pupil in it, pupils in them. So you do this, make the eyes a little bigger. Then there's hair, there's always hair on a person. Now, you know, how much hair on a person? That, that depends on your, your, your person. So you figure out the hairline, you put some hair on there. And a lot of people, a lot of young artists, I don't say young kids, will just put the hair right on top of the head, but hair is actually off the head. So you want a little more fluffy hair. So you do this, you give the guy some hair or the girl, whichever you're drawing. A lot of times little girls will draw girls and boys will draw boys. And this is why I'm drawing a boy. So. Then you realize, okay, things like the ears. The ears have like these inner workings to them. You're, you're, and as I say, you're, you're observing as you go. Then there's a neck. We're not going to get into necks, but I'm just going to put a little neck on the guy. 
there. So from here to here, that's a big jump. That's that's a that's a great start to drawing a realistic face just by observing a few things and adding to that face. So let's go on from there. I want to continue to use this guy, but I'm going to erase. I actually need to start another paper, but I'm going to continue to use this guy. So some of the bigger things that you, you realize is like the nose. Nobody's nose is really like that. So you kind of have to study your noses because noses comes in noses. A nose will come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. So the best way, a lot of people start out by doing a V from a nose. And that's kind of close. That's, it's really close. But then you realize the actual shape of a nose. And as I say, it's all about observa observation. You have to observe what it looks like. So the V was right. You have that small button part of the nose, which your nose is shaped like this. And then you have the, this, your, your nostrils that comes up like this. They curve around. And then you have your side nostrils, but you also have, like I said, this big piece in there, which is this bulbous area. Um, I don't remember what that's called. And then the nose goes up to the eye. So let's erase some of this. And as you observe and then you start pick out details in a face and put those details in that face or those right shapes, shall I say, in that face because drawing is just a puzzle it's just knowing the puzzle pieces and where the puzzle pieces go so you say okay these are, eyes are not right what our eyes look like so take these eyes off I'm gonna take one at a time and you you know that they're more football shape they're more football shape like that and then let's get rid of the other eye And the hard part about eyes is just keeping them lined up, keeping them on the same line. So we have that, and then your pupils. You have your pupils, which are in the eye. And the one thing that will determine a realistic face are the eyes, because that's the one thing you look in to. We always, when we look at somebody, we look into the eyes. So you have to know what eyes look like. Then I'm not even going to do the detail of the eyes yet. Another thing is what surrounds the eyes. These, these are the eyebrows. Okay, so your eyes, you open and close, so you're going to have that skin that folds. So you're going to have that folded skin above the top of that eye, <clears throat> both eyes. And then sometimes, I mean, you can do below, but me personally, I don't do the below because the more lines you put in the face, the more a face starts to look older. So you just want to put your basic lines in there. So you have your fold lines. Then you work on your eye. Now, yeah, the eye is always wet. So there's going to be a shine in there. So if I did this, if I did this, and the eye is more, it's more rounded this way, and it, it dips down more at the side, and it comes up like that. That's more the shape of your realistic eye. Now, if you're doing comics, you can just do this, this, uh, this, this, and then just kind of round it off like that. Put that football shape in there, and that will suffice for an eye. Hopefully, that yeah, that was on camera. So you have your pupils. Then you're gonna have I think it's your iris, your centerpiece. But as I was saying, your eye is always wet. And so let me go back. You have this. You're gonna have that centerpiece, which I think is your iris. I'm not too sure. And that's I think it's always black. And then you're going to have some kind of a light source in your eye because they said your eye is wet so it shines so you're going to have some kind of light source from either um your ceiling light the sun uh whatever is going to whatever is light is reflecting and you on the outside of that eye you're going to have this dark darker darker surrounding i guess you could call that and then the, um, not in every eye. And see, right now, I don't know the names of these um, things, so forgive me. That adds the color to your eye. So if I ink this, let me ink this, because this, that's kind of small. So, oh no, you want to mess up the day? You want to really mess up the day, camera? 
hadn't done that in the last few videos. So whenever I draw an eye, it's going to be like this. It's going to, I'll usually put a lot of, a bigger um, light source in. This is my, the, I guess it's the iris, the center part. I will make this darker because when you have, your eye is shaped like, shaped like, <laughs> your eye is shaped like this from the side. So this is going to be out more. Uh, this is your eye. This is the top of the eye, the bottom of the eye. Your nose is going to be right here. So because this is out more, you're going to have that shadow right here. And see, the eye is the most important thing. And then you have your piece, you have your iris there, and you have your um, light source coming somewhere. So your eyes basically just that ball that's inside your head, and then that skin that, that slips open, and you stick the eye in, in that skin. I'm sure you've seen movies like that where they put the fake eye in. So it's like this, that, you have your, your shape, it comes around, and I always make mine thicker right here. This line here, this line that goes around, I make mine thicker here and thinner as you go at the bottom because of the shadow. And then realistically, you have that shadow that goes over top of this eye to make it look like it's going, actually sucking back into the head. And then if you choose, you can have these lines here. These, I, you know, I don't know what these lines are called. And realistically, some are thick, some are thin, some go all the way in contact, and some don't. Some just are like just little pieces like that. And then you have your eye. Now, of course, you have the eyes round. The hole is maybe a little bigger, but you have this piece right here on the side. You have this little pink fleshy piece right here on the side of the eye like this. And of course, again, like I say, because you blink and you have that folded skin above your eye, you're going to have this. So doing an, an, a realistic eye is the biggest part to having a realistic face. Then you want to have your eyebrow somewhere. There. I mean, all this should have been bigger from the beginning, but I'm sharing the same piece of paper. So again, so let's let's work on this eye, these eyes. So what I do, I have this circle, then I'll have a light source there. You have to have it in the same spot as the other eye. Well, it's gonna look all, you know, cockeyed, cockeyed. The black in the center and going around. And you have to kind of keep that centered as well. Oh, he's going to be looking like, he or she's going to be looking like she's looking, you know, in a different direction. Right there. So you have your realistic kind of eyes. So then you put your football shape in. there and then this little piece here your folded skin folded skin and skin that's folded and then your eyebrow thicker in the middle and thinner going out especially for a female and then this your nose is going to come and go down Here's my nose. Now, we're getting there. So you look at the face and you say the mouth. The mouth is not really, I mean, yeah, you got to turn it up when you're happy. But the mouth is more straight across. Where is my eraser? So underneath that nose, there is a, I think it's called a philtrum, this little piece, like a little teardrop, which actually shapes your mouth. So the top of your mouth, if I did that big, it's good. It's like this. It's kind of like this. Here's your nose. And then you have that little piece here. And that shapes your, your lips, actually your lips, not your mouth. So your mouth is like a giant M. And then... There is like a little dip here, but that's that's when you really get detail. And then you have your, your bottom lip, which is 
round or it could be, you know, depending if you're doing a female, you know, uh, if you're doing, you know, African-American, if you're doing Caucasian, whatever. It depends on the size of your lips. You have to determine that for yourself. But this little piece actually forms the mouth. The mouth. I keep saying the mouth, your lip, your top lip, like that. So it's kind of like an M rounded off. And then you have this because this real, realistically kind of comes into a V and then it goes up and around, just up and around like that. And then I'll take the second, your, your lower lip, and this is, I'll just kind of like break it like that. I'll take it down and then bring it around like that. But as far as a man, you don't really want the full lips unless you're doing like, you know, an African American some, or something, somebody with big lips but usually the full lips are reserved for the female for the male you give kind of a thin lip so here and you don't always have to do this but you kind of give the shape of the mouth so before I give you the shape of the mouth let's we took the circle off running with the red and we're going with just a straight line like that so already he's looking more realistic than what we started out with now you, you have to have your measurements of your face. And this is where you get to the serious realism because you know your face is shaped more like an egg. So let's do this without getting a thousand lines. So what I used to do I, is I used to center, I used to center, but then they, they, they change a little bit. Everybody's face changes, but when you first start out drawing faces, just kind of center it. So from here, measuring from here to here, I'll say this is my center where my eyes are going to go. So from here to here, if I measure that, I'll say the center, that's where my nose is going to go. And from here to here if I center that that's where my lip is going to go so you have these three lines like that well that's actually a little higher but it's supposed to be higher so center that center that as well realistically the face is supposed to hold five eyes it's wide enough to hold five eyes I don't do five eyes I'll do one eye that will that I know is about the size of the eye itself so then I'll do a second eye and a third eye because one eye is supposed to fit between the two eyes. Erase that. So basically now I have my space for my eyes. Now, if I'm doing serious realistic or if I'm just trying to do a uh, halfway realistic, it determine, that will determine your eye, the type and the shape and the size of your eyes. Like anime, you're doing, you know, bigger eyes if you're doing more of the Western style, if you're doing comics. So, you know, if you're doing a portrait, it, it's, it all depends on what you're drawing. But now I have my eye shape. And for me, I usually don't connect the bottom of my eyes. I leave it open. And that's just a me thing because it, it makes it look like the it's lighter here. You know, you have, because remember the shape I said, this is gonna be darker up here because you're gonna have that shade from this top lid and this is going to be lighter down here so I'll just leave this open for me for me but just for you guys if you're starting go ahead and close it so now you have the right um, distance between the eyes you know if you're drawing as I say comics if you're drawing like this bad guy or somebody like that then of course it could be crooked or the eyes could be big or it could have a patch over the eye you know the sky's the limit so now if you go straight down that is the length of your nose as well. The eye between the eye, the, 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 the length of the nose is actually the length of one eye. So remember you have that V here again. You started at that and you want to curve it in. You want to leave some room for the outer nostril. Leave some room for the outer nostril and then it comes up and then remember this piece here. Now, whenever I draw too too much with this pencil, I can't really see because it's bad reflection from my overhead light. So the nostril comes up. Let me use a pen for this. 
because I really cannot see that reflecting. The light is reflecting really bad. Now, I, I try to show you. You can see some reflection off this paper, but mine is so bad, it's, I, I can't really see. So we have the bottom, comes up, and the nostril. And you don't want to make the nostrils too big or too high. You have to determine that when drawing noses, and then the bottom of that comes up and in. From around it, up, and then in. And you have this round piece, which is right here, which it goes up under there. And you can have shadow under here stop there and then it goes up here and you also have this flat plane that comes out right here but that's like when you start to get into some serious portrait drawing so remember that's going to come up and go right up into your eyebrow so we're getting into we're getting into measuring now again so you have this little piece which is there and that's going to be the, the top of your lip at that so this is going to be the opening of your mouth so you can lift it or drop it depending on you know how much you, you want or what type of face you're doing doing measuring again okay so center of the eye straight down center of the eye straight down that's your lip that's as far as your lips are supposed to go so if I did this so let's do this man so I don't I don't want to really connect the whole mouth if you're doing a female you can connect the whole thing so I'll just do like just edge lines and then this is going to have some kind of shape to it because I don't want it just to be just to be just straight because as I said there's a there's a little point right here there so we have that remember you have this you don't have to go all the way around with that and then you can have some of the lip come off of it like that just just a little bit and then for the woman I'll round it off and the man you can kind of just flatten it because you have your top lip and then you have your bottom lip. How far down do you want your bottom lip? So I'll kind of like flatten it like that, almost kind of like going up like this and then back like that. So this, you know, you can leave it at that or you can actually connect it like that, depending on the type of person you're drawing. And then your chin is gonna come out under that. And your chin, to me, I think your chin is like, at the, the nose, you have your round part here, and then you go up there. So I'll usually, most times I'll usually have just the round part of the chin about right there the, at the end of the nose. Now, the jawbone, when you go out from the lip, this is where your face takes that turn. You have your cheekbone, cheekbone, jawbone, jawbone, cheekbone is up here. And then you go up from there now we went from kid uh, um, almost kid drawing to more serious drawing so but these are the measurements these are your measurements here so what is it the ear is from here and I believe it's at the top of the eye so and the ear is just if you're drawing an oval like that chop it off you know if you can draw it coming down or or, or just a kind of a heart but you want to curve there. So if I drew a heart like this, I'll draw this and I'll have it curve in. And then that's your ear. I don't know if you saw that with all those lines. That's why I usually don't do a pencil. Pencils are really smooth. And I know you probably don't understand that. If you look at my channel, this is why I use red pencil. Because it gets more bite when you grab the paper versus a pencil. It's like, it's like sliding across ice almost. It's too smooth. And this is why I do a lot of lines with a pencil versus with this because I have more grab on it, but that's a whole other story. So what we're saying, the ears, the ears are gonna be from the top of the eye to the nose. So remember, just trying to like draw a heart and just curve that up like that. Same thing here, draw that heart and curve it up. And just by the shapes you see, you're becoming, you're doing more realistic stuff. So as I said, this is going to come up and this goes right up into the eyebrow. This curve, same thing here, right up into the eyebrow. And you can't forget that second line because that's important to doing the realistic face. All right, enough measurements. Let's get back to this one. If this is your first time doing this stuff, you don't need to start here, but you need these measurements. So what was I doing here? You have this, you did the lip. Remember I said that it comes down like this and then 
that really comes to a point. So the shape of the mouth is like that. The shape of the lip, I keep saying that, is more like that if you're doing planes. So we have this, and then we have this, this line here. Remember, it's going to come down to the center of the eye. But it depends on, again, drawing is a lot of depends. If you're drawing a profile, then you won't, do, you won't be doing this. If you're drawing a three-quarter view, you won't be doing that. Profile, three-quarter view. So for those, this is your straight view. This is, um, this is an old G.I. Joe head that I, I did. And it has this paint on it because this is my one of my characters in my comic book. I did a clown and I needed to know what the makeup would look like on the guy. So I did that. So when I turn it, I'll know what the makeup looks like on that clown. So that's why it's black like that. But this is what you would call like a straight view. If you're looking at the person, this is a three quarter view when you just turn it like just a little bit of the way. And this is your profile. For those who don't know what a three quarter view is, your profile is from the side. We all know that. And a three quarter view is just you turning it just a little bit. So you see a little bit of that eye there and then straight on and then again three quarter view but when you're drawing uh, you're going to be doing like down shots of the head up shots of the face you know three quarter view up shots so you have to learn all of that but it's basically if you know where your lines are where you to put the pieces of the puzzle then you're you're pretty good so we have this and as i said if you want to draw you know some lip i'll draw and a lot of this is just based on how i draw i'll draw just part of that i won't i don't connect the lips you can connect it i don't and then as i said with this one get rid of this pick up this like that so instead of making it round i'll kind of make it flat for the man and not too not too thick and then maybe come up a little bit and then, of course, <clears throat> your chin here. Not too much, as I say, probably about the size of the nose if I'm doing the chin. Now, I say, okay, this guy has big a big chin. So I want to um, bring that chin up. I lost it for just a second, just a second. But you have to get the shape of the head right first before you... Uh, start drawing it so let's just say I bring his chin up about right here and remember you want to bring this up once you have your square chin then you come up and then it turns so now this head is a little bit wide but I'm going to go with this but I'm just going to shape it up um, enough to show you the shape of a, a realistic face but it's, it's going to be here because I don't want to just uh, erase and erase and erase it because it, it's just if this is your first time trying to do faces or realistic faces, then you'll be lost if I start out like doing, doing that because this is the steps that we take when we learn how to draw faces. So, but I will use this. You have your temple here. It sucks in, it kind of sucks in right here. You have your cheekbone, which is like right in here. And then the face starts to come in here and then turn. So you don't want to have your face too wide, but I'm going to use this just because. So remember, you're going to have that little that little temple here. It curves in because of your cheekbone. It comes down. It's going to turn here and then your chin. And this is going to be a wide head because I don't want to change it too much. So you're going to dip in here. Curve out here. Come down and as it curves, remember it curves right here. I didn't change it too much, but I'm going to change it a little bit. So then you're going to have your head. Of course, you're going to have more forehead than this. I'm using that. Because if you did the, the center rule, the center, you're going to have half this and half head up here. So I'm going to give this guy just a little more head like he should have. And let's erase the hair. Because that was not a big thing. 
because he could have whatever kind of hairstyle you chose to put on the person or the character. And I will, before I shut this down, I'll do a quick female face to show you the difference between that and that. So let's give this guy his, his head. I mean, don't suck this in too much because the head actually is going to go behind the ear, but you have this little temple right here. So you have the head, you have the mouth, let's ink this, and then from there you, you're going to have to do whatever type of hairstyle. Now people say, oh, can you teach me how to draw ha hair? The best thing to do when you want to learn how to draw hair is find your magazine. Find your fashion magazine and then draw your hair, the type of hair that you want. So. Another thing about the eye, where's my paper? Where is it? Oh, right here. This comes down in, and then you have the cheekbone. So this sucks in. So another thing you can do is, as I say, just put a little few lines. The more lines you put, the more older the characters will get. So you want to be careful about how many lines you put in there. And I'll turn this guy into an old man to show you if I can remember all these things I'm promising. So this is my head, and I'll put my hair back. You have your hairline, which is about right here, but then he could have bangs or a hair coming down. So that that you know that hair thing is on you. The hairstyle is on you. So I'm going to put that hair back the way I had it, give him this little like widow peak, and it comes in and comes down, and you have this little piece that comes in, and your um sideburns a lot of people forget to do sideburns so that's why you gotta have just a little bit of room on the side of the face for that so i'll just do this that so and i say you can have whatever type of hairstyle on a person that you choose that's on you but remember if the, this is his head this is the top of his head take the hair off of the head now this chin is making him look more still cartoony but these are the steps so you have your cheekbones depending on the type of the person type of person you you have if you're doing like this uh captain america type with the big jaw you have that and of course your ears again shape your ears right what I'll do is I'll do this. I'll do this ear. And then I'll do this one line right here and leave it at that. Let me erase this other stuff. Then the next line I'll bring around this. I'll stop that line and then I'll bring that line around and it kind of makes it look like it's it's going behind or that ear is coming behind but there's always this little piece and you, if you feel right here there's this little bump in your ear right there and this line's going to come around i don't bring it all the way down and then there's the inner working of your ear and i'll just do another one at the bottom just make it easy because everybody's ear is completely different you can black that in and this actually goes here and it's shadow but you, you usually when you're drawing you concentrate on the eyes But you have to have that inner working for your ears because that is part of drawing something realistic. Now, the wider your face, the younger a person is going to be. Like if you do a kid's face, the kid's going to have like that wide, he's going to have that wide jaw, little chin and wide jaw. And as you get older, your face kind of slims down a little bit. So if you do like a, a baby, small mouth, you know, bigger eyes. But the, the face, the jaw is going to be bigger and then the little kid ears and then you just start adding the realistic stuff that I showed you of course they're gonna have a bigger uh, eyes wider eyes because your eyes you are born with the same size eyes that's the only thing that doesn't grow on you are your eyes so yeah just a little science there your nose your mouth is gonna grow your, your face your head all of that's grow but you have the same size eyes that's why babies and puppies and all those things have those like big cute eyes you're like oh it's so cute because your eyes are not going to grow. It's the, that stays that same size. You know, you, you, as you get older, your, your skin kind of folds over top of it, and you know, because you get you get old. So anyway, 
How was that? So we have this, we have that, your hair. And as I said, now you got your, basically your realistic from this to this just by adding things. So if I started adding extra lines to this, this guy would become a little older, like you have the, the, the little the lines here. And of course, the crow's nest, the crow's feet is what they call it. And you can see, you know, he's getting older as you do it. So you don't want to add too many lines. And then, of course, people have like the droopy lines here. You have the, the, the brow wrinkles because you're worried. And then you have your hair, which will go actually go back over your head. You lose, start losing your hair. And the older people lose hair altogether. So your hair is like here. If you're unfortunate enough to lose your hair, you know, my hairline is going back now. So, and then with the neck, and this is just a front. I'm not going to get into profile. I think I did do a video on drawing faces and show you profiles and three quarters. Just go back in, in my videos and look through it. It's there somewhere. People never do that. They always ask, can you draw this? Can you draw that? And basically a lot of this I already have online, but I need to just update it and redraw it and explain it better. And again, as I say, when you get to the eyes, I always do this little shadow. There's this little shadow here that makes the eye look like it's set back in the head. I'll draw this thicker because of that shadow. Maybe not that thick. And if you choose to do the, the I don't know what these call. I know what they're called, but at this point, as I said, just jumping up, you can do that. Maybe a thin line under here, maybe. Depends on how realistic you want to get. And then if you shape that face up right, Remember, it's more of an egg. Let me use the red. Bring that face in. You have more of a realistic face. Let me just cover all that up. All right, so going back to the neck, because that's going to be part of your, a lot of times that's part of your face. Depending on how wide your neck is, that tells you how powerful you are. Like women and children, well, children are gonna, are gonna have like these little tiny wrinkly, wrinkly necks. A female, if I did a female, which I'll do female faces are more to me, I'll point, I'll do more of a pointy chin and around like this. You see that? Oh, pointy chin. And then their necks are like that and it comes out. Now, if this guy was like, you know, Captain America in his prime, His neck would be straight down from his chin, right on the side of his face, straight down. And that gives him more of that powerful kind of look, even though he's an old man right now, he's still got that thick, powerful neck. If he was younger or older, you know, you, you lose your muscle tone as you get old. I'm hating that now. Then you would bring that neck in like that. And if you like say, that's about, a, that's around about a teenager's neck here right there and then you give him those low shoulders like that I mean that that suits him for eight the age that I just aged him and if he's powerful like the Hulk but if this is this is a face tutorial but usually next go somewhere around if you're gonna draw a face then you're gonna bring it from the ear and you're gonna bring it out like that at that angle so this is a powerful old man here, getting that little muscle in there. And then his shoulders are gonna be round like that. So this this guy, he took his super serum, super, super soldier serum, and now he's just all of that. So yeah, his, this cat is like, he jacked. This guy is like Jack, old man, old man Jack. <laughs> yeah, so that, <laughs> looking at this picture in the monitor, yeah, that, that determines the age of a person is, it, is his neck. So let's just do a quick female, the difference between the male and the female real quick face, because I know somebody might want to draw a female, and there's like, I don't want to draw a man. So, of course, again, oval, uh, egg shape. I'll do the oval first. I'll do my oval like that. Just your basic oval. Okay, come on now. 
Thank you. Straighten up. I'll do my oval. And then for the female, as I say, I'll have the chin. I'll start out with a point. And then just round that point off. And then go up like that. That's the only difference is just this little point on the chin. Then you go split it in half, depending on the, the way the person is turning. So if I do this, this is this shows that the person looking forward. This is that three-quarter view. That center line is going to be there. The eyes, one eye is going to be over here. One eye is going to be over here. That nose is going to be more like that. Coming down, that mouth is going to be like that. And then this comes down, and that chin comes out. And that's your three-quarter view right there. And realistically, you put your nose. And the thing is, with a woman's, when a woman's nose is, they really don't. If you look at a lot of art for women, they don't draw the whole nose because the nose is kind of considered ugly in art. So they just do as the least amount of a nose for a woman. So, okay, again, start out half. You did this half, so like half here. You can raise it up a little bit if you, if you, if need be. Half, half and then like half of that. So that's your start for your face. So I'll put her eyes. Now her eyes with the guy eyes, the center line right here, I had half and half of that um, football shape. So we had this football shape on here. I cut it in half like that. So they both fit right there across that eye. Now for the female, I'll take it up. I know my line is probably crooked because I always draw crooked lines. I'll take it up like here. You know, you can draw just this. Say, this is the size of the eye that I want right about right there. So this is the second eye and this is the third eye. Get rid of that. And then you kind of have your eye placement. Now, as I said, with the guy, I'll do this. But with the female, I'll come up and this is where the corner of the eye is going to be off of that line. It's going to be curved up like that because women always have that, you know, that the, the whole eyebrow thing, eyebrow eyelash thing. And it just kind of gives you that kind of the pointy eye that looks up. So again, the male's eye is going to be like this. The female eye is going to be up here. So drawing a close up here, the male's eye is gonna be here like that. The female's eye is gonna be like this. So it's gonna be at an angle, not straight across like that. And this eraser is not doing good for this paper. Like that, and of course my lines are crooked. I always draw crooked eyes that's something I have to get over it's just <clears throat> it's just me because as you see the way my paper is my paper's going this way instead of going this way because I cannot draw just like it just my arm my arm just doesn't want to do it my hand so I have to turn it this way even when I write I turn my paper this way I don't know why so it's never you know turn it because my elbow is like right up against my side I can't draw like this I have to have it flared out so I turn my paper so this is the female eye. You don't want to have it too up because they start looking evil a little bit. And it all depends on the rest of the face. But just know when I do an eye, it's not the centerpiece is on that line. The other part is not. So then again, with the nose, you want to have that, that little V. And instead of a wide nose, you want to keep it in and with lot, without a lot of nostril. So... This and this. Now, for a woman, as I said, you don't want to spread the nose out too far. And of course, my line is kind of like going over there, but that's okay. This is not this is not perfection face. This is teaching you how to put the puzzle pieces together. So we're gonna have this little V, not too much nostril, and then that. Now that's that's about as much as the female nose that a lot of people do, and they have a little curve here. They don't do that, and maybe they'll have like the, just the little piece to show that the nose is round. But I mean, if you're doing a portrait, you're gonna have to know how to do this. So, but you want to keep the the um, and then there's this piece here because the nose is shaped like this from the side. There's your nostril, it's like this nostril, and then you have that. So this 
is a different on a different plane. This is where your shadow is going to hit, and it's like this nostril, like this, and then you have that part of the lip, and that's why I said there's a like center line. That's that center piece right here in the lip because of this. And is how is it? If, when doing the side of the face, you, you want to have this angle. So the, the bottom lip is like that. You don't want to have the, the bottom lip jumping out in front of this lip for the so-called perfect measured face like that. So yeah, you have that little center piece here. And this is the this is that this is that filter, if I'm not mistaken, it's called. So as I say, again, you don't want to have too much nose unless you're drawing like the portrait. Keep that. And then you have this piece here, which you don't have to draw, but just know that it's there. And that actually shapes the mouth. So I'll have this. So that's a high mountain. And then I have a curve round. And remember, center of the eye. It depends on the type of female you're drawing. That center piece here curves up. And down almost like a bow and arrow kind of thing and then I'll have this broken piece right here then I will have the lip depends depends on how um, thick you want the lips you can have really thin a female with thin lips or you can have the, the full lips or you can just make it more you know deeper down here depending on the type of female you're drawing and of course, we have the eyes again. The eyes are the window to the world. So if you get the eyes right, I think people will forgive you for the rest of your mistakes or, you know, not looking so much. So then I'll flatten this out. Remember this little dip right here comes in to the, the face. You have your, your cheekbones around here. So the skin is going to kind of go around that and in. And then I will just round her chin off just a bit. I don't have women with square chins. So just remember you have your cheekbones, so it's going to round out right here. It's going to go in and then kind of come out at the thing. So you're going to have to really work with the outer fate, outer shape of the female. And this goes up and then you have all of this that you need to cover the hair. And of course the ear, top of this, bottom of the nose. And then from here I'm going to go fast because you just look at the first part because it's all the same. It's just the puzzle pieces. And then... From here, you have this temple, but the back of your head to me is bigger, so I will draw this extra piece that's coming from behind the ear, because this is just this little shape right here, and it determines where your hairline is. I'm doing too many lines, it's doing it too dark, so I'm starting to get um, that glare. And then, of course, you have, for the female, you have your lashes. Where did I do with that eye? If this is my eye, for the female. I don't do this. I don't do that. I just do like one, unless it's like a really close up of an eye. If it's, if it's small like that, I'll just do this one piece like that. Just come up like that, just one little piece, and then down like that, and just darken this whole thing. Then you have your eye, your light source, your iris, I think it is. And then, remember, I darken this part here. I make this part right here thicker. And then, of course, you have, because your eyebrow eyelashes are there, I'm not going to have that little piece here way above the eyelashes. If the eyelashes are here, I'm not going to have that piece way up there. I'm going to have bring it out. So it's going to be here, and it's going to come out to about right there. And that's how I do the female eye. So what we're saying, we have the shape, we have the ears, we have the eye, which is the most important part. So my lashes for her are going to be just like that. Here's the top of the eye, here's the lashes, just dark. And at the bottom of it, same thing. Dark. I don't bring the lashes all the way across. I, I kind of like stop it right here. You can do whatever you choose. And then the eye, I can maybe bring that up a little bit more. Of course, it depends on what you want to do. The light source, wherever it is, I'll just put it in the corner. And then the iris. And if it is a close, if it is semi-close, I'll still do this. But then I'll, I'll just kind of like flare out some lashes like that. Hopefully you can see that. Let's see. I'll just get a few flared out lashes like that. If it's a 
medium-sized eye. If it's a small eye, it's going to be like that. So, and then you have this little piece that comes down, that little folded piece that comes down. And I guess I'll draw the other eye and finish it off. Is my nose. Not too wide, not too many lines. Even that, I shouldn't have done that. The less lines in the nose, the better for the female. And then that little V. And then the mouth. And it, this is crooked because, as I say, I draw this way, so my lines are always going to be crooked. Especially if I'm rushing. If I'm doing like a serious one, then I'll stop to measure. That's going to be over the eye, and then I'll usually leave that open, like I say, but that's just my style. And then the lashes. If you need be, I'll put a little line there to show that the ear is a bottom line. The, the folded skin comes out here. Remember this nose, with the way it comes around. You have your, your lashes, lashes, eyebrows. Eyebrows, yeah, really thin. And by the eyes, you can change a woman if she's going to be evil or not. And as I said, it comes in here, but you don't really have to worry about that because usually your hair, the woman's hair will take care of that. Your ear is like half a heart. There's one line here, stop there, go behind that line, come down. You always have this little centerpiece and something inside your ear. So shape of the face. So let's just say this, you got your cheekbone that comes around and this is the thing you have to get it right before you ink it. Cheekbone, you come in, and then you have your uh, chin. Uh, chin right, right off the bat to me is a little long, but that's what happens when you ink and you don't have your um, you don't have your lines, your right lines down yet. Coming up, the other ear, and this is just a front face. You start out with the front face or the the, the, the front of the face, then you work your way to doing three-quarter shots and profiles and usually in in books comics you're usually doing a lot of three-quarter views because people are talking to each other so you don't see too many profiles you have somebody like this and you have somebody like that and usually they'll do the three quarters three-quarter view a lot because they're talking to each other people are always talking to each other so you have that you see that mostly in comics and since my channel is more about comics or how to draw comics, I always refer to that. If you're doing portraits, that's a whole different thing. You're looking at somebody's picture and you're drawing from their picture. But just to learn how to do faces, people will do three quarter shots and then they'll talk to each other that way. Same thing here, the center of the chin is gonna turn at that line and go up in your ear, and your eyes, your nose, and it's gonna go, that's gonna go up like that. And that's one thing about the three quarter shot, you have your nose, comes down, it's going to go up and right up into that brow. It comes down and out for that cheekbone and goes around like that. Something you have to work on. Like that, yeah. A whole other whole other video. So we have that for the female. I usually don't do too much of you know this for the female because the less lines you put on a female, the prettier she's going to be. Then, of course, again, you have your neck. You don't want no man neck like that. You know, she's not like, yeah, you don't want a man neck coming straight down from there. You want to bring it in. Bring it into about right. You got to kind of feel, you know, you have to have a feel for it. Just do some lines there. Oh, the neck is here. No, that's too big. I'm just bringing it into a feel for it. So for a man like this guy, as I say, straight down from the chin, if you're doing like a powerful kind of man, if you're doing like comics, and then a man's shoulders are going to be rounded like that, depending on how powerful he it is. He is. So the neck actually comes in like this. And then you have those two muscles that go to the ear. And you have that little Adam's apple here. And at the bottom here is your, what is that, your collarbone. This is a little dip. And then your collarbone 
there which goes to the end of your shoulder and then you have your delts and this is your this is your traps these are your traps that go actually like this and they go basically go behind your your your, your neck so and now i'm giving you anatomy lessons so if this is your profile here's your nose here's your chin here's your neck they go like this they go up behind your neck like this they curve like that and then you have your your collarbone comes here and then your chest there and this is your delt your delt is right here and these go here and up and to your back that's a bad example but yeah this it goes up and behind your neck because your neck actually realistically it comes like comes down like this and the rest of this is this coming up going behind it and then you like I said you have these two muscles that come here and you have like your Adam's apple and some other kind of shaped muscles that go there right down the dip to your collarbone so that's why you put this little curve just put this little curve if you're muscularizing a guy it's gonna be like that this little because this is your shape like that and as I say it goes behind your neck <clears throat> kind of like to right here like that but that's a whole different story and video so again so your neck for your man is going to be thick like that and it's going to curve whereas i'll uh, keep this if i can keep that right there so you can see the difference and the woman's is going to like that and it's going to slope like a like a, a ramp like a skateboard ramp like that and it's not going to be as wide as this and it's just going to go down depending on you know the the um the age and you know the femininity of the woman and she's gonna have the same thing you're not gonna see too many you know neck muscle too much neck muscles and then her collarbone is gonna kind of like go up come on Brian draw this thing go up and then you have the breast that come down here from under the arms so now we're getting into anatomy but no anatomy so once you have this you're good enough for the female a lot of times I will and this is just me I'll make my lips black and this is just me you don't have to top lip is going to be black again this is just me I don't know when I started this but I, I do that and then the bottom lip is going to be black except for the light source which is like right here and this is if you're drawing small pictures if you're drawing like faces like this 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 size like that And you don't have to, but like I said, it's, it's, just, it's just a me thing. And it kind of like leaves it like shine. You, you already know what the shape of the lips are, but it leaves this kind of like shine, light source shine. It's a me thing. Then we get into the hair. And again, people say, can you draw hair? Hair is basically, it's not like this. Because <laughs> hair has a body and bounce to it. Something I learned when I was looking at somebody put a, a anime doll together they had a little anime doll and the hair came in pieces so first you have to find the type of hairstyle you want but going back to the anime they had it like it was like and they were numbered it had like one piece here and it was just that one shape it was like this then they had another piece that they glued on it was like this and another piece that glued on was like that so it was like each hair came in like little pieces each piece of hair came in pieces so let's just do this for this so what i'm saying is think about the hair style that you want first and then don't just try to Think about each little piece and then go from there by saying, okay, the hair is going to curve around like this and this piece. Then I have another piece of the hair is going to come from under there and curve around like this. And this piece curves around on top of that like this. And then you have another piece that, you know, so think about it as in pieces versus just trying to, you know, throw it in there and you don't have to throw every line there like if I stopped here you might want a shadow right here 
to determine this is a new piece of, of, of this is another piece to the hair right there. And of course, you're going to have hair that kind of like intersects, it goes over, and you want to shadow in between that as well. So you just don't want string, 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 because if this goes behind the ear, and then you have hair that's coming from behind that, you might want that shadow here. And as I say, hair is not just going to follow each other like this. It's going to cross over because of the wind, the way it, it cur um, the way it's combed. So you have intersecting lines, crossing lines, and where they kind of cross at, you might want to put just a little shadow in there, a darker line, and then some darker lines, you know, wherever like they intersect. And of course, if your hair is behind the head, you're gonna have more shadow up here anyway than you might down below. So yeah, hair, hair tutorial. So going back, looking at this, one thing I always do before I ink something, before I ink something, if it's a serious piece, I'll put it away. I'll just like turn it over or go eat something and then stop looking at it for a while. And then when I come back and you look at it, you'll say that your camera blurred. <laughs> you'll say that, okay, now this piece is wider than that piece. So let me narrow it down, narrow it, narrow it down a little bit or this chin is to whatever, or this mouth is to it. So when you look at something you can, and you just keep drawing and keep drawing, keep drawing, you're like, oh, this is good, this is working out, this is good, this is good. But then later on when you look at it, you're like, oh my God, why did I do that? That's because your brain is like, yeah, it's on fire for drawing it. But when you stop, walk away, go get something to eat, go, you know, look at something, don't start playing video games because you'll never come back. But just, you know, go away for like five minutes, go to the bathroom, go get a sandwich or something. And you come back and you look at it, you'll say, oh, you'll see your mistakes or something that you don't like. Even if you turn it upside down, you can turn a picture upside down, look at it, and you'll see it kind of like through a different, different eyes because I can say that, where is it at? This is higher than this by just turning it upside down. You know, So if you're trying to get perfection, you have to stop and walk away and then come back and look at it later. So I was going to say, oh, if you have a mirror, the best thing to do is have a mirror. If you have like a set place that you draw, Try to get you a mirror that sits like, you can't see my hand, like in right in front of you or on your wall. Because my drawing table is against the wall. And in my old home, I had a mirror on my wall so I could see myself. So you can make expressions. And that helps you draw two faces by seeing yourself. You can make the expressions. You can look at your nose. You can look at the way your chin or your hair is combed. So yeah, as I say, reference. Even if you're looking at yourself. I tell people when they try to draw hands and they can't draw a hand, use your hand. Take a picture or have somebody take a picture. Everybody got a camera phone. So yeah, reference. Reference is your big thing. So this is your faces. Now let's go back from this to this. So follow those steps. We start out like that and we work out and it's just basically how does the nose look? How does the mouth look? Where is it placed? Um, you know, how's it tilted? So from just from this, you should be able to draw more of a realistic face. And as I say, because I didn't change that this guy kind of like looks like a one piece character so anyway <laughs> yeah you you go away you come back before you ink it and then you say okay now so let me shape this guy up a little bit more to make him look more realistic and it depends on what your character this guy could be an old old man barbarian It'd be perfect for that and then hair get that and then okay let's just just say this i want you to add like a mustache to this guy or beard Comes down and you observation. How does a mustache or beard look? Let me use a fat pen because this is just gonna. I just want to mess this up basically. Where are you? So this, like that. Usually they curve depending on how much mustache you have. If your mustache connects to your your beard like that, and it could go down and just over the face. So the hair is gonna always go down like this. Come down. You have that kind of beard. Now, there's a beard going to go up on the face and connect to the um, sideburns. Is the beard going to be long, flowing? So once you get the face right, then there's a, the million things you can do to the face. The billion things you can do to the face. So you know, the guy could have, 
you know, a bush or just nappy, you know, I wouldn't say nappy, more curly kind of hair. He's a rock star now. But the more you detail you put into something, the more realistic that something is going to look. All right, see, I can play around with this thing forever because when I get my drawing juices on, they just continue to flow. So, all right, so that's going to be it for this video. Remember, this is how we start, and you won't necessarily finish like this, but you're getting close to <laughs> you get close to something like that. Keep your face shape right. Get your face shape right. Use your measuring lines. Keep everything in between in your lines, and then you're good to go from there. So I'm going to end this video here. Just remember half, half, and half, center line. You're above, the, like the eyebrow and the nose is your ear. Your eye is one nose size. From the center of the eye down is your mouth. From across here is where your chin curves at. And from like your nose is like your curve of your chin. And you can shadow that under there. That's shading is a whole different thing. You have your cheekbones, so it's going to be round right here. It's going to curve out and then go in. And if you're doing the type with the little jawbone comes in like that. The little, as I said, the Captain America type like that. So yeah, as I said, I can, I can go forever. But these are just tips to do a realistic face. I talk fast. I know that. Just watch it. Watch the video again. So that's going to be it for this. And then um, I guess I'll see you guys later. And if there are some things that you, you want to know how to do, leave a comment. Also, give me a thumbs up. You got to give me a thumbs up so YouTube can recognize that this is a good channel, that I'm putting out good stuff and people are really enjoying it. So a like, a like, a thumbs up. You got to give it a like. And so the channel can grow and it'll be place higher in the rankings of others so when you turn on YouTube you'll see my drawing channel like oh there's Ron's drawing channel because you gave me enough likes that YouTube say okay a lot of people like this let's put this in the front instead of way down the bottom somewhere so that's it as I say give me a, give me a thumbs up and uh, if you want me to show you how to draw something that I can draw like some people say teach me how to draw a tree there's a million trees you know I can't teach you how to draw an apple tree or, or, or whatever tree or whatever tree. I could basics faces are basics bodies basics Cars are basics, but what kind of car? A Corvette, a Mustang, or whatever. So that's kind of hard. So just think about it when you when you want to learn to draw something, because I can't draw everything. Something that takes on a million forms, a million shapes. So yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys later. I like to ramble at the end of my video, but that's just me. See you guys later.